Hi, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns. You're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop RPGs with friends. This is part of a bi-monthly series. I am running for the Gauntlet community. Gauntlet is, as you can see from Greg's shirt, uh, a group of uh, folks, a very strong group of folks who like indie, small press, and OSR tabletop RPGs, and we get together and play them. Star Wars Saturdays is part of this, and that's the thing I've been running for a few years now, an anthology campaign taking place, current timeline of Star Wars after Palpatine has died, the New Republic is taking control, but the Empire has not yet given up its uh, control of certain sections of the, of the galaxy. And we are currently playing the first session of this bi-monthly. The system is in development from Greg and I. Current working title is Swodu. It is a Powered by the Apocalypse game built to allow for the play of old school modules, old school as in West End Games, D6, also the Saga system, D20, and possibly some of the Edge of the Empire stuff. Uh, but doing it in a more indie-friendly, collaborative, uh, story-gaming way. For the kickoff of the series, we are playing Starfall. Starfall was created for Star Wars the RPG back when there was only one from West End Games. It was released in 1989, I believe, based on the trademark from the PDF that I have of the game because it is a very out of print and the uh, the books if you want it are expensive because this this particular venture was famous in that it came with a small poster map of a star destroyer the first time that I'm aware of where anyone tried to map a star destroyer it's pretty cool and the setup for the game as all West End games, uh, most of them, the Star Wars D6 has a uh, like, tear out that you hand to the players and they all read a little bit that is the preamble for the game. I'm going to elide that because, uh, number one, it expects six players. <laughs> Not a thing I can pull off, friends. And secondly, it puts words in your mouth, literally. So we begin the game with the four of you and this is interesting right because the assumption of the west in games d6 modules you're all playing human near humany folks because everybody's inspired by the original trilogy and there weren't as many aliens as part of the rebellion our characters as folks can look over shoulders are an uh and zelen which is a tiny character and uh we also have a droid the uh, medical droid so the two of you are this is and and again we'll make sure that that uh, i'll check in with folks but the four of you have been thrown into a cell an imperial cell on a star destroyer as we begin uh, <clears throat> so uh a group group of agents You've been assigned to accompany the great engineer Wallach's Wally Blix, designer of the Victory Class Star Destroyer, to Quinn Space Station. Blix, now a respected member of the New Republic, received a message from his son-in-law, former Imperial Governor Den Wessex, who LC-22 knows rather well. Den Wessex claimed that Wally's daughter is near death. Even though it appeared to be a trap, Wally could not pass up this last chance to reconcile with his daughter. Whether Lyra Wessex, who designed the Imperial class Star Destroyer, based upon her father's previous work, is truly dying or not seems inconsequential. Upon reaching Quinn, Wally and his escorts, that's you guys, were captured and placed in the custody of Captain Koloth a commander of the Victory Class Star Destroyer known as the Subjugator. Because all Star Destroyers have to have violating names. <laughs> now you're trapped within the detention block 
of the powerful ship, you have perhaps some hope of escape. Or perhaps you're just waiting for the eventual return of your captors and the terrible interrogator droid that is sure to accompany you. So LC-22, as a medical droid, you were accompanying Wally Blissix or Wally Blix, um, and that's when the Imperials. So did they when they captured you? Did they put an ion bolt into you and you awaken in this? Uh, so oh, I have a everyone? like a restraining bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They probably did. That's what the Empire does. Um, hit me with this straining bolt. The whole limbs went weak thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm coming to. And of course, a couple of the stormtroopers are like, why do we even care about this droid? This is Koloff said, throw them all in, in the detention center. Uh, now, Kadulish, when we open with you in the cell with the others, did you just remain hidden within the astromech droid that uh, is your home? <laughs> um, it's my cover and I think that that's exactly what happened they grabbed the astromech droid and then slapped a restraining bolt on it and put me in the same uh, detention center with LC cool okay so you are I'm sorry I read the, the chat uh, because I'm foolish you are inside the, the astromech droid as we begin this I think so and I okay, think there's cool. a restraining bolt on the astromech of course. droid itself um, yep. Unless it messes something up, yeah. No, no, totally, totally works with me. And then, uh, Georgiak, you are here alongside Janella, uh, aka Star Dancer, because I believe you are a stickler about using code names, if I remember correctly, Georgiak. <clears throat> the four of you are in this detention center. I'm going to unhide just so you have a sense of space. Uh, sheet 15 which I will now rename Detention Center. So we begin as the four of you are thrown into the cell. You are in between cell roll two and one. Hopefully this picture looks at least a little familiar. If you have seen the original trilogy, uh, you guys are in this cell. You were separated from Wally Blix and are not sure where he would be held. Now, here's the first question that I have. Which one of you, uh, all of you, of course, realize this could potentially be a trap. Which one of you has the small uh, remote control beacon with, that once depressed New Republic uh, or the Alliance, the New Republic fleet so would be notified that you were in trouble. If you've seen The Mandalorian, you might recognize this particular remote little gray thing. It's got three red indicator lights and for some reason a small antennae. Uh, once depressed within about 10 minutes or so, basically plot time, um, the Alliance fleet or the New Republic will be on their way to attempt to rescue you. So who, who was carrying it? I think Kadulish should have it because he can hide it inside the, the droid. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds perfect. Great. So you've got that. Now, as we open up, uh, Kadulish, you have yet to hit the button just because I want to see it on screen. Uh, and I'd like to have just a little bit of free play to see... <laughs> Shoot, the doors are closed. Stormtroopers march away. As you hear, they're on the deck plates as they march away. Janella, are you? Do you have like the cosmetic that you have? You been roughed up? Do we see the the Janella? Yeah, like there, there's like some blood trickle from the mouth. Nice, nice. Um, LC has a restraining bolt on him, as does Kadu Lish's astromech droid. And uh, Georgiak, did you take any hits? I know I was trying to buy you time to <laughs> munch down. Sorry about that. Did you take any hits once you were uh, taken captive? Maybe, maybe during the point when you knew you were going to be separated from uh, Wally Blix. And 
that's not yeah, good. I think so. I think uh, George Ack has a, a shiner and uh, <clears throat> is probably a bit a bit sore. He's got some bruises, but he's mostly underneath. But he's, he, he took a, a punch to the eye. Nice. You took a punch to the eye and then. That's what you get, rebel scum. Of course, because that, that's what you get. Uh, cool. So. Uh, yeah, LC. We... Oh, oh, sorry, LC sort of makes like some beeping noise as they start to boot up. Commander. <laughs> would you like to me to pay some medical attention to your eye? Um. If it's uh, your original type of medical attention, then please, yes. Of course. Uh, uh, and then realize that there's a restraining, yeah, realize that there's the restraining bolt on them. Uh... Uh, it, it can wait, it can wait. We'll, we'll deal with it later. I've had worse. Yep. And I think about this time is when uh, the R2's astromech droids pop kind of like and kind of wish kind of pokes his head out and you know is everyone okay? You know, where's Wessex? Did anyone see where Wally went? I put him in some other cell I think. Okay so I and so I kind of get out and I start, you know, I, I eye the restraining bolt and then I, on my astromech droid. Then I look up and I see the one on LC. And I kind of, you know, climb up on top of my astromech droid to get over next to LC. And I start prying at the restraining bolt to pop it off. So I think I pop it off and I'm going to dink with it and then put it back on, deactivate it and put it back on so it won't be suspicious. Um, and then... Uh, that's to... interesting. I think maybe I'd like to see you engage a move with that. That sounds perfect. Awesome. Uh, so you're attempting the odds against the odds are against you being able to do this without anyone noticing. So I think I'd like to see you engage the move. Never tell me the odds. Okay. What about uh, I want to draw your attention to my tech thing. Uh, mm. When you work with a piece of technology, you do something beyond its capabilities. Is that similar? Absolutely. Let's have you do that. Okay. Roll plus clever. Is that plus clever? Yes. Okay. What's the uh, what's the effect that you're you're going for beyond just the the Imperials won't know? Um, primarily, it's a disguise. Yeah. Let me look at the. You're, that's a good question. Um. So the, the things over here is like, I'm building a weapon that can do something and how long it lasts. Never tell me the odds are, I think that, I, I like never, never tell me the odds because it tells me um, it's complicated or fleeting, like whether or not it would hold up to close inspection. So is that okay? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. And what is that with? Uh, you choose your approach on never tell me the odds. So in this case, I think it's still clever. Okay, let me roll that. So that's an 11. Wow, all right. So never tell me the odds. On a hit, you successfully turn the odds in your favor. You are able to free LC22 from the restraining bolt. Uh, I do want to remind you, you need to depress the button to to call for help so that has not been taken from you you've got it just tell me when you do it so that i can start that countdown timer. right right i think that um so kadu talks out loud and says i don't think it's time to hit the button yet because you know we don't know that we really need this you know that this is out of our control and then walks over and i think he hands he's like uh so, George Jack, do you have a, a title, like a commander or something like that? Oh, I liked when you were calling him commander. Yeah, I, I think I just do that anyway. Commander George Jack, and I hand you the button, and I say, it's your decision as to when to call, you know, call for reinforcements. And then I turn back to work on my astromech droid, 
good while LC starts to heal everyone up. Okay. So, uh, while the wounds that you guys have, I'm, I'm cool with narratively fixing things up. I did not change the harm levels for anyone. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious. What's the plan here, Commander? You need to <clears throat> get out of this cell and, and rescue um, uh, Wally. And I need to look at my move. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is when I do my uh, when we're headed into danger thing. Okay, so you're interested in engaging your following direct orders isn't always the best way to solve a problem. When you're headed yeah. into danger, gather your crewmates together and speak your words of wisdom and encouragement. For each crewmate, select one of their unmarked approaches that they should focus on. You roll plus careful. Yes. Um, and I think what, what George Jack is doing here is trying to figure out how, how can we best, like, what, how, how can we as a team best utilize it, each other's strengths? Um, so, uh, Kadu, I want you to find a way to get out of this cell. You're smaller than us. You can probably squeeze through somewhere where, where the rest of us can. Uh, and I think that's going for clever, probably. Um, um, and, and find a way you can, you can open the, the cell door. Um, Elsie or Bacta, I should say. Uh, I need to. Uh, I, need to I use gave myself the absolutely terrible code name Bacta. Yeah, no yeah, one yeah. will ever catch on. What is what is code the name. code name for Catalish? Is it Small Fry? No. Sorry, I was like going. I was inspired by bad bad code names. What's George X code name then? Uh, I don't know. Um, it's Casino because he doesn't gamble. So that's no uh, one would so suspect terrible. it. That's delightful. Yeah, um, I'm into this. Uh, once we're out, Bacta, I want you to take out any guards. You're you're the best equipped to to handle. Uh, since, since we don't have a, our weapons, I think that's direct, probably. Understood. Um, and Janela, oh, Star Dancer, sorry, Star Dancer. Uh, <laughs> I want you to, uh, you and me, we will try to find uh, Wally and, and uh, get him out. Um, we also need to get our equipment back before we get out. Yes, uh, good point, good point. You do we, might, that. we might need to get that first so it helps us get Wally out. You find our equipment and, and uh, get it, make sure everyone else has it. I think. Is that daring? Like trying to get the, the stuff without having the stuff? Sounds sounds daring. Seems daring. So sure. you want daring to be highlighted? We don't have a way to show that a stat is highlighted in the keeper. So let's I'm just gonna put an asterisk by daring for now. I know that's not really a great solution, but it's a solution. Yeah, I don't choose one for myself, right? It's for everyone else. Correct. Right. Yeah, cool. So now... And, uh, and then you will press the button? Uh, and then I will, as soon as we, as soon as our cell door is open, I will, I will uh, call for aid. But I don't want to do it before that in case they, they intercept the signal. Understood. What's the big worry? Back to... I've got a oh. great feeling about this. <laughs> I love it. So it sounds like you guys want to try to open up the door. <laughs> I should that... roll my... my oh, yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, there is a roll uh, at the end of this. Please careful. roll plus clever. I have one in careful so that the four. <laughs> oh. Oh, but, but oh, there's the thing. Uh, I could choose to mark in my own careful to treat this as a seven to nine. I will do that. 
Okay. So then, yep, there you go. You've checked the box. That means you're going to be rolling with disadvantage on careful going forward. On seven tonight, each crewmate can choose one of the options above. The next time you roll it, you do so with advantage. Next time you would mark that approach, you can choose to mark another approach instead. Uh, I will choose to roll with advantage next time I roll daring. Okay. I said, sorry, direct is what you marked for me, sorry. So we'll put an asterisk by direct. Why is daring red? Who made it red? Why is it red? Because I was trying to highlight it before I'm fixing up. Fix Boop. There you go. Uh, and then Kadulish has clever. Awesome. Thank you for that. Nice. You already got a we got approach marked. I'm excited about this. This is this is perfect. So we get to choose one of the seven or nine options or the yeah, 10 either, plus option? Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Either either you get to roll with advantage next time, or next time you would mark that stat, you can mark a different one. Okay. So I think the next thing advantage, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna take advantage and um I'm going to uh Kadu's going to try to open the door um, and see how well he can open it without setting off an alarm. Okay. I kind of feel like you're hitting the, the making a piece of technology do something beyond a standard capabilities because it's not supposed to open for you from this side. That's right. I, I, I completely agree. So I'm going to roll that with advantage. Okay. You're rolling 3d6 and I'll take off that asterisk. So if we don't do it more than once. So that's uh, eight plus one is nine. Nine. Seven to nine, it works mostly. Pick one of the glitches from below. Um, I'm going to screw us. I'm going to say it draws immediate unwelcome attention. Yeah. And that doesn't screw us at all. So I think it opens. I think the door opens, and uh, but it draws the attention of, of a guard. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So uh, actually, I see what. So you, oh, you take immediate unwelcome. It's all good. It's all good. It's not clearly written, and that's a that's a piece that we'll we'll tweak. Uh, so yeah, the door opens up, and <laughs> is there? So I mean, not to retcon anything. Is there any negative to assisting? Or like, is there any requirement to assisting? Oh, uh, the requirement to assist is to say, hey, uh, I would like to help in I'd this like to help. way. Okay. Is there a negative? Uh, you I mean, get there's mixed you, up in the bad, yeah. the, but the like, bad effects? It's basically they get to roll. All right. They, they were already rolling with advantage? Yes. So can they roll with an extra double advantage do you still give <laughs> no, them an extra d6 when they're helping somebody that has an advantage because it doesn't say you're rolling with advantage it says you add it you roll an extra d6 that's fair that's a yep. fair point it's just but you're already yeah you're adding to a roll that's already future. failing yeah 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 okay so just so we're clear greg do if you either advantage or disadvantage you don't double advantage you don't double disadvantage we just or do you want to? Do you like the idea? I think, of I think the a aid die? aid still adds a die. It's not quite advantage. It's different than that. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll so play with that. Yeah. This is play test. Uh, so, Jillian, do you want Janella? No, because I like the help? I like the problematic. It's just like it's at the nine. There's no reason to not help, but like this is also fun. So. Okay. So it's more of a comment than a question. No. So follow up. Do you have to help before or after they roll? Uh, you can help after the roll. Yeah. It makes sense. I just want, you know. No, it's a great question. In fact, that was what on the Slack just the other day. Yeah. I, I, I like help after the roll because it always feels weird to help somebody before a roll and then they would have yeah. made it anyway. And like, oh. Yeah. That was it. And that was yeah. Monster Hearts. So that was a different question entirely, too. So. <laughs> yes, it was. And the, and the other part, and I know we're, we, we paused here but the other part about it for me is this game specifically you it's like you've seen them take this approach you realize it's not perfect and you offer your own approach so it even makes to me more sense to do it after the roll because you got to 
kind of know where they're headed with it. And it's before we resolve the fiction that you offer the help. So you, yeah, to me, I, I think it was written very well by Greg. Uh, cool. So problematic side effect is thing. Uh, That's actually exactly, you know, what Elsie wants, right? We've got to get weapons. He's harsh and loves this yeah. kind of stuff. And so uh, yeah, Elsie will, uh, they, they pick themselves up um, and are just going to play the, the part of the lost droid um, and start to go down the, uh, the, 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 the cell block. Excuse me. Excuse me. I seem to have lost my location. Excuse me. You run in. There's a stormtrooper who's quickly walking down. He's got a blaster uh, carbine. Hey, you're not supposed to be out of here. Get back in that cell. Is is this cell block seven? Is this cell block seven? I'm just looking around, and I'm just going to... Elsie just takes a swipe at his helmet, just trying to, you know, knock him out. I think you're trying to blast him. Uh, let's see how this goes. When you get in a fight, describe how your character engages in combat. I think we have a little bit of that idea. Does not seem like you're trying to be daring. No, I'm, I'm going for the direct. I'm, I'm going to roll with direct. my advantage. All right, you're rolling with advantage on adding direct. All right, here we go. And I'll remove the asterisk for your roll. That advantage. is a... Eight plus one is a nine. Um, rolling with direct, do do do, basic moves. I I you know I kind of remember writing this one. Um, <laughs> but a nine. Ooh, and I guess an interesting question. Since I'm just swinging my hand, um, mm -hmm. and I can choose to add plus one harm, but my weapon will be no longer functional. Does that mean like I break myself? And I would just take harm. Do we want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. I also, I like this a, is note for okay. later, I think yeah, you can deal plus one harm. Your weapon is no longer functional. And I like the idea of, or you can mark direct as an option. If yeah. someone says, eh, I don't want to lose my weapon, I'll mark direct. So I think that's a, a, a tweak we can do. But let's play with it as written so yes you are also going to take harm because it's seven to nine and you take yep. one more harm i think he shoots you is what's happening now the good news is i get to ask you this question you get to answer however you want because they couldn't have stripped you of your carapace do you believe that your character is armored um it's totally up to you no, because droids in Star Wars just take hits and, and crumple. So mm -hmm. I don't know All right. if we could. I might, I might go that direction as an upgrade, but yeah. Okay, so you are taking, uh, you're going to drop down to wounded and you need Oof. to mark an approach. Um, I will mark, uh, I will mark careful. It's not that good anyways. I'm certainly not good at careful anyway. Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, LC takes the shot and then I think there's just like the you know so obviously the knockout didn't work right the stormtrooper gets a shot off so well, no it's seven like, to nine so he yeah I think yeah. you you knocked him down at this point, right but, but it's not it's not the one punch hit that LC was exactly. going for right so it was, the, it was the, not the, yeah, the punch like the shot how, how it then, started how it's going uh, yeah. <laughs> and then they just uh LC just lays a shiv into like between the points of the armor and gets him I, I, am I killing the stormtrooper did I deal enough harm uh, if you want to drop down there okay. and kill a stormtrooper after he <laughs> fires his laser out and it bounces off of a couple of the walls, uh, you do realize that's going to be a thing where more stormtroopers will be coming. Yep. You know what's happening, but you've got access to a plaster rifle now. Do we cut back into the detention center where uh, the, the cell, cell 113, because uh, it's cell block one, Number 13. 113, Georgiak. You're kind of the commander here. You hear the blaster bolt go off um, and a tussle outside. What do you do? Go, oh, go. You know, you know what you're supposed to do. And he'll run out and try to, to help uh, Elsie. Uh... Nice. Uh, three of you come out. You see that Elsie is busy. How, what does that look like? 
what does LC have? What secreted weapon does he have, or how is he killing this stormtrooper right now? I think it's it's some sort of medical probe thing on his hand, on their hand. Yeah, they just and and then also like Elsie's a really strong droid. They're a droid. And they just lift the stormtrooper up into the ceiling, right? Just and that's enough to. Wow. Uh, what do we see, Kadu? Kadu, is it droids? Is that your code name? That's the best. So yeah, so Kadu actually comes out last. Everybody else kind of exited. He crawls back into the R2 unit, closes things back up, rolls out, and sees like the aftermath of stuff. Um, and I think whenever that happens, he sees kind of what's gone on. He runs over to, you know, where the door is, and there's one of those droid ports, plugs into it, and I want to see, I want to make sure that the alarm doesn't go off. Uh, so I'm going to say the uh, the alarm for this detention center has gone off. Okay. Stormtrooper came, door is open, blaster bolt heard, they're flipping the switch. If you want to contain it within this detention center, I will give you a roll for that opportunity. I would like to turn all of them on. So <laughs> all of the detention center alarms all go off at the same time. That is amazing. Uh, I, I like that a lot. Do you wish to engage your, this one goes here, that one goes there? Um, let, me, let me look at that for a second. Look at the results. Sure. Um, no, I, I don't, I think that one's, it barely works. It works, but pick a glitch. Yeah, actually, that, that'll that work. Yeah, let me okay. roll that. Yeah. yeah. All right, go ahead and roll plus clever. Okay. Clever is a one. Oh, that's <gasps> an 11. That is an 11 on a 10 plus. It works as desired in a timely fashion without too much fess. You roll over in the astromech where you... Were you, did you crawl back in it, I guess? Yeah. Before I exited the, the cell, I crawled back in it because it would blow my cover if they right, saw me kind course. of running out. And I roll out, and I think this is the aftermath of, like, we have the crumpled guy at the base, and the shot's gone off, and all that kind of stuff. And that's whenever I roll up to the socket and plug in. And Awesome. So, uh, <clears throat> give me just a moment. So, Kadu, you, I'm totally pulling a Star Wars moment. You dial in right? Because it's the thing where you, you dial in, you're turning on all of the detention uh, block alarms. When you do, you also get um, the updated information. I'll just insert a new image into the detention cell. You also get the location of where Wally is. And of course, a number of other prisoners it's not full it's at about 30 percent capacity in this particular detention block so i have a couple of questions on the detention block map where's the door that we'd kind of be standing at uh great question so here we'll just screen share so we're all theater of the mind but also a little bit the way i'm imagining this is where stormtroopers are unless they're marching up and down the cell rows when the Doors were opened at your cell. This guy came hustling. He went up the stairs here, took, hung a left, got clobbered by LC-22. Uh, <clears throat> then the droids came out. <laughs> and I'm assuming it maybe you engaged with the port here. Okay. Because we haven't said you are attacking the detention center where there are going to be like six stormtroopers. So you kind of slid over here, engaged it. That's where you got the information. The uh, Wally Blix's cell is here in cell row two. And you guys, I guess everybody's standing near you right now. Uh, but you're going to all, we're going to need to see what George Jack and uh, what, I'm sorry. Let me get back to our code names. Casino and Star Dancer what they are doing start answer we haven't heard from you you see droids zipped over is doing some yeah, stuff so like, brutalizing a stormtrooper what are you doing uh when george george jack 
gave me my orders uh you know she just sat down in the the detention cell and she's gonna like try to reach out she's got like built up a connection with these lightsabers throughout throughout her exploits using them Uh so she's trying to like feel where they are in relation because that'll probably be where the rest of their stuff is well, that makes sense. It sounds as if you're searching your feelings. Yeah, that's what I was like. I didn't see that. It was either going to be the feeling or, uh, well, I guess, good, bad feeling or search feelings. But search feelings makes more sense. I just didn't wasn't sure if the results make the sense. Um, It's gaining insight. So okay. uh, I think it's... You're like the suspicions are correct thing was like, what? what? Wait, I have suspicions? <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Maybe it's just... Sus- All right. So I get to roll whatever says on, on any unmarked approach um i think i'm being clever are you are you being clever okay all right well i'm not being daring I, sure i'm not really being careful i mean there's a lot of shit going on all right let's be clever to you get to roll plus I, like i know clever was the force power stat for the drop down so I'm just okay. Keep it, keeping it, keeping it 100. All right. Go ahead and roll 2d6 plus your clever, which is a plus one. There is an eight. All right. With a seven to nine, you gain insight, but you need to adjust your approach. Un- uh, you unmark to- an unmarked approach. Oh, no. <laughs> exactly. You don't have any marks, but you do gain the insight. You get the feeling of that. You're reaching out for your lightsaber, right? That's, that's my, what I yeah, recall. Yeah, my, my lightsabers. Yeah. Yep. So you read, oh, plural. Okay. Yeah, remember, they were from Alderaan. I know, but things could change. You know, sometimes you have a, a green lightsaber, all of a sudden you got a blue lightsaber. It happens. But they're still red. <laughs> maybe, maybe you've got you had two, and one is at the no, bottom nope, of still of those Wild two. City. Okay. Anyway, it is in the center, kind of the smiley section, the little smile the bit. Smiley <laughs> Does that not look a little bit like a smiley face? No, I, I, see I, I see it. I see it. I see it. You can't unsee it. I've it's a cyclops smiling. <laughs> it's a cyclops smiling, totally. In the cyclops smiling section to the, if you were to use compass directions on the western side, so underneath the cell row three, there are lockers where your things are kept. You feel that. Uh, in through the forest. Now we must check in with Casino. As you see, the star dancer hasn't even bothered to come out of the cell. She must be sulking. Who even knows? She's <laughs> droids is droids is off hacking, slicing the world, and uh, Elsie is done making mincemeat of a stormtrooper. More stormtroopers are coming. They are coming from. Uh, both sides so a, a few of them ran up cell row two aisle and two more running up cell row one there are four stormtroopers two and two coming casino are you going to bet on black that's the question that i have <laughs> um oof. so uh star dancer is still in the cell right and both yes, uh, both Bacta and Droids are like at the cell row one thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll run the other way and just try to jump the stormtroopers when they get around the corner. Oh, blast them! I love it. Uh, what is the approach that you're using? Uh, it sounds like you're not being careful. I'm just saying. It does not sound like I'm being careful, uh, which is good because my careful is marked. Um, I don't know what this is. It's probably daring since I'm jumping a stormtrooper. I don't have any weapons. Okay. Roll plus daring. Your daring is a flat. So you're rolling 2d6. Good luck. Yeah, I get an 8. So that's uh, not the worst. Would it's you like me to aid stars. you? <gasps> oh, let, let me see what the what the result is. You also take harm from the enemy. Uh, Darren doesn't help there. So aid upgrades me one. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I I'd let you roll one more. I, I'd give you one more die to roll, possibly rolling higher than the two. Chances are pretty good. 
it's 50-50 uh, that I get to 10 plus. That's pretty good. And with daring, I can choose to draw their attention away from the crew. Yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that. So I'll see you're helping. And he, uh, Casino, I'm going to have it in my head by like game four. Casino was being daring. So what approach do you feel is uh, useful? I'll be, I'll be using direct. So you can roll one more. And I, I think it's just that like, so you jump and then like the arm, like very much like IG-11 in, in, um, in Mandalorian, like the arm just spins around and starts shooting in nice. that direction with the blaster rifle. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. That, okay, that, is, so that is really cool. I will just roll the one die and we'll see what that is. And that's a five. So I get to an 11. Awesome. Perfect. So with a 10 plus, as you said, uh, you deal harm to the enemy. You take out one of the stormtroopers, you and with LC helping out, and you choose to draw the enemy's attention away from the rest of the crew, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think what, what I do is like I, I jump this stormtrooper and I think LC shoots the other one because there were two, two coming, right? So the one I grab shakes me off and I start running away from, from the others. And he, he, but since it's kind of curved, he has to chase me. He can't just shoot me. Ah, he's doing the Han run in the middle of the Death Star. I love it. One yeah, of them yeah, yeah. Is, is shot by LC. He falls to the ground. I got my will health scream in. The whole series is is an ace now. We've we've met that minimum. Uh, cool. Start answer. You get your information. Droids. You get your information. I think the two of you maybe meet up as you have a moment of respite. LC and um, I'm sorry. I, there's no LC here. There is only Bacta. Bacta and Casino uh, have drawn the stormtroopers away. So start start answer. What do you do? I mean, we're gonna go around the opposite direction since since Georgiak has pulled the attention towards him. We're gonna like, all right, come on, Cato <laughs> or R two. Whichever you want me to call you. Um, I don't think Kadu follows. Kadu right, stays right. where he is. Yeah. I mean, she's just gonna keep rushing ahead. Like she's yeah. barely like he's slow. He'll catch up. Is, is, is Star Dancer running? Is she running to the weapon stash, or is she running to like in the direction of the cell? The weapon stash. Oh, okay. Like, to, so we can have our stuff. Okay. Uh, I think you're attempting something despite uh, the odds against you. You are acting on the inside. And I want to check in with you, Greg, that I don't recall seeing this in the intent. Open your brain in Apocalypse World doesn't give you a, a plus one. It's only acting on questions for reading a situation, as I recall it. So at based on that same information fueling me forward and we can talk about this tonight when we meet about it great mm -hmm. i'm not giving up an advantage to start answer for this you just are going to attempt something despite odds against you and sneak around to get everybody's stuff does that make sense yeah okay yeah All i was right. like saying uh or i was looking you don't have any plus one forwards existing as is right so. it's advantage uh, we we've tried to excise that i i I should probably not even use that terminology in talking in the talk through here. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So what am I acting under fire? Uh, effectively, you are doing the never tell me the odd. What is your approach? Um, I feel like I'm being daring. Like I'm like rushing right in towards the thing because oh, then... like Georgiak has pulled attention away. So, okay. Uh, you get to roll with advantage then. You're using up your roll with advantage. It's very clever. Yeah. Okay. So are odds not in my favor, I guess? They're not. Okay. Despite all right. Oh, you 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 know where the stuff is. You know that some were drawn off. Uh droids hasn't told you what they did. <laughs> but... I don't care. Like I've got my own problems. Indeed. Uh so nine. Sweet. 
Uh, okay, on a seven to nine. Uh, what with... were you doing, Genoa? Just rushing towards where all the stormtroopers were pulled away from. Okay. Cool. Um, can I help? Yeah. I mean, you took. You stayed behind, but so now you changed yeah, your yeah. mind. You're, you're no, no, no. I stayed behind. behind. Um, my plan was what I want to do is I want to open all of the cell doors. And this would be the help would be this is a distraction. So the guards are suddenly they can't get to uh, start answer. Um, it, it impedes them. OK, well, Janela was being daring. Do you feel like then your approach is is clever? Um, I don't think it's clever. Let's call it direct. Oh, OK, cool. All right. Uh, with a direct, you get one more die. Start answer. All right. Oh, shit. So it's got to be higher than a three. That's oh, six, so. it yeah. is indeed. You, you uh, make your way running down the the tension center cell row one, and all the doors. Shoo, shoo, shoo open up and you see half of them have people in them maybe half um and cell row three same for two you make it to the central area there are a couple of stormtroopers but you do you imagine the start answer without a weapon would just kind of slide down past them yeah totally or jump over them you know oh nice so yeah you you jump over the stormtroopers one of them follows your action there and you depress the door opens up and you see there's a bunch of gear Stuff, that's been yeah. stowed and thrown in there. Let's cut over to uh, Casino as you are running down, being fired at by stormtroopers. They're telling you to stop. Uh, what else is this entire place? <laughs> this entire place is closed off. You're, you're being a fool. And then all the doors start to open up and, and there are people starting to filter out of the detention block what do you do casino uh <laughs> i think this is the now i'm doing the the hand run in in reverse because i think when the stormtrooper realizes that there's like 10 prisoners here or something that he's he's outnumbered uh so uh, i'm going to charge him Ooh, nice uh i'm gonna give you advantage on this role because he's he's going to be overwhelmed at this point you're just kind of the tip of the spear here uh let's see you blast him what approach are you using sounds direct yeah yeah probably direct or daring but i think direct in this case because i'm not i'm not alone anymore so it's not uh, uh dangerous okay roll 3d6 keep the best Two oh, and add one. Uh, oh, right. Advantage. Yeah, I yeah, gave I you advantage. I've an on just two dice, so I don't need no stinking advantage. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, famous last words. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, you slam into him. He, he gets off a shot, but it bounces <laughs> off of the walls, uh, maybe even hits like somebody just grazes them and you take him down and now there are prisoners like filling this place up uh droids you know where you know where your buddy is uh, are you wally heading that way because you don't see him yeah wally blix is not come out of the detention cell yeah so i think i'm definitely um um headed that direction and of course um i'm broadcasting you know i think i'm okay number one uh they have a code name don't they wally has a code name sure you wally. should give him well, just one. wally right so i'm gonna say blix because who knows who that is blix Blix is in the center corridor, so I'm broadcasting that to everyone and say, it's a prison break. Everybody make for the doors. Get your best way out. And as I'm driving that direction, I'm also scanning through the list of other prisoners that are here to see if there's anyone else I recognize. We had, cool. during crew creation, a list of NPCs that popped up. So Yes. Yeah. Are there NPC, any NPCs you'd like to stick into the scene? 
as having been prisoners here on this Star Destroyer? Um, I think I'd like to see two. There was someone that Janela was betrayed by. And I think let's put that one in and then someone else who maybe we left behind maybe from that garrison. Interesting. Okay. That so uh, first I think Georgiak and I left behind. Um, under Georgiak, should this be your wife? Should this be... Uh, I think I think that's for later. That that okay. should be a, a later thing to show up. But it could yeah, be someone who who was from there who we didn't know survived. Uh, that could be it. Could be a thing. Yeah. So how about those two? Okay. So someone who survived. And what was the first person again? Um, let me look again. Uh, Amela Amerisu, Alima Amerisu, um, the person who portrayed Janela. Ah, sweet, our, our Twilic friend. That is problematic and delightful. Uh, we will stick those two in here. I'm going to grab a name. This is someone left behind. I'm going to just grab a name if that's all right with everybody. Redar. Redar? No, I don't love that name. Uh, I don't love that name either. Um, we're going to go with Ron. L-A-R-A-N. Ron. Ran. Ran? Ran. We'll go with Ran. I'll send it out. Sound it out until it sounds okay. Ran Barand. And uh, did you put the... Julian, did you put... Uh, there it is. Okay, I'll just grab that. Thank you. And I'll stick those two in the NPCs in place. It's perfect. You even got the pick. Good work. Awesome. So those folks have come out. Alina will look at, at uh, Star Dancer angrily because not only was she left behind on Tatooine. Oh, uh, do I see her? Yeah, I think so. I, I got a move to roll. <laughs> you got a move I, to roll? Yes, you yes, do. My archetype move. Yes. You got a lot yeah, of absolutely. guts coming here. When you meet an old acquaintance, tell the GM why you have been avoiding them. She shot me and left me for dead. That's why I've been avoiding her. <laughs> she did. She did. She did. She okay. Threw me. Roll Fracking, plus. Flarking. Roll plus clever. Let's see. If they've forgiven your trust, <laughs> I did. <didn't, laughs> Sorry, you're a scoundrel. You chose the archetype, so she's. Yep. Is, I mean, that's she fair. I'm not? okay with it. It's like you weren't criminal enough for us. <laughs> you're a regular Boba Fett. <laughs> not good enough. Nope. Six minus. I'm the daimyo, but we do not deal in spice, nor do we take cuts from anyone. I just you. take fruit occasionally. All right. Uh, that looks bad. Yeah, it that looks real minus. bad. Uh, they call on a debt you owe. They hold a bounty on your head, or their blaster's already drawn. I don't think they have a blaster. If they're just getting out, of, well, maybe they got one off of a stormtrooper. Okay, they have a blaster. <laughs> they have a blaster. They have a blaster. That's awesome. Sweet. So, yeah, starting oh. you come around with your stuff. You've gotten everybody's gear. Um, and yeah, uh, Alima is there with the stormtrooper blaster rifle yep. that she levels at you. Are you serious right now? With everything going on, you want to do this? I think you need to engage the these aren't the droids you're looking for when you seduce, manipulate, impress, intimidate, or otherwise try to change someone's way of thinking. Describe your method and role plus approach. Uh, let's see. I mean, like, we just broke you out. You still need to get off this, this ship. You think you're going to shoot me and my friends are going to help you? That's pretty logical. So is that clever or direct? Uh, you tell me. Uh, I get a bonus with clever. So, <laughs> so that sounds like clever. Yeah. Uh, all right, then. Six. <laughs> 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 
cool. I'm going to have you mark that approach. Because remember, I, I, I told you guys I was going to be doing that a lot. Uh, they are not swayed, and I think she's going to shoot you. <laughs> All right. Fine. Uh, it's three harm that comes well, your way. I got lightsabers, so that's like armor, right? It's like armor. Sure. Check off the armor. You take Ooh. no uh, thing. There you go. Maybe one of the two lightsabers is uh, it, it takes the brunt. Like the power capacitor needs to be played with. You've got droids. It's fine. You, you, you know, droids are, or Bacta can probably fix it with you. Uh, let's swing back. I'm curious what LC is up to. Yeah, so I think after uh, Casino charges the, the stormtrooper and, you know, knocks them out or, or kills them, whatever it is, there's just LC is in like the silhouette, like, you know, in the, in the doorway in the like the octagon of the imperial hallway it just says commander unless you press that button our odds of escaping are seven and five hundred million is 431 yes yes uh, i'll press the button and i press the button there we all go. right <laughs> nice work <laughs> i believe we may have in- released more prisoners than intended and gestures over at a uh Janella and uh no I gotta face her down I, <laughs> I can't believe it rubbing it in pew pew she's firing at you <laughs> it's it's it Alina Marisu may be making her last stand here <laughs> I don't think she's gonna survive against somebody with one functioning lightsaber and another one that looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Droids have you have you located the commander? So I've been broadcasting the location of uh, Blix um, and the other names that I see in the list. Um, so, and, you know, this is across communicators or just blurring it out through speakers or something like that. George Jack's the only one who would recognize Rand's name, I think. Oh, yeah. Yet again, Steven stuck a pick in, but did not do it as a the image. <laughs> didn't do it with the the ending with P and G or J. There we go. All right, so Ran is a female. All right, cool. All right, uh, let's see. So, droids, were you heading to? Blix's cell or just broadcasting it and trusting someone else to do that? No, I'm, I'm headed that way, but I'm not super fast. Yeah. Fair and I probably have to go looking at the block cell. There's stairs, so I probably have to go the other way around. Oh, true. I'm looking at the detention center. Oh, man, your worst enemy, stairs. Right. Oh, yeah. It's a shame. All right. Uh, so then with. <laughs> Very obviously, Star Dancer has is, is got another thing she's working on. Casino or Bacta, which of the two of you reaches Wall- Wallach's Blixix or Blix's cell? Or do you both reach at the same time? That would be fun. I think, uh, I think Bacta is going to try and stun... Um... Alima, so we can we can deal with that later. Droid Jack can be if you want if, if that's what you want to do, Anders. Sure, sure. Okay. All right, we'll stick with Casino. Casino, you enter into the cell designated by droids, your compatriot, and there you see the unconscious form of Wally Blix, and you also see a floating. Uh, imperial droid uh, an interrogation Ooh. droid that is um, can I have like grabbed the, grab the blaster from the from the stormtrooper there were not a lot of stormtroopers I mean I the think... one I, I uh, knocked down okay uh, sure the one you knocked down absolutely yeah. you, were, you were first on the scene uh, that makes sense to me so yes you have a blaster rifle yeah, then I'll just shoot the, the droid. Oh, 
blast them then. Let's see how this goes. Cause it turns to you and it has a number of, you know, devices on it that would be yeah. very not fun to, to, yeah, feel. So let's. I um, think this is direct. I'm just shooting it. That seems fair. That's an eight. Let's oh, an eight. It gets to hurt me as well, right? It does. It does indeed. Is there anything anyone else wants to do about that before hurting starts? I'm fine with taking the harm. I think everyone else is basically. All right, then. Uh, it is going to. Uh, you fire on it once the first time, it zips at you uh, and it jams a syringe into your side. Uh, and you will take two harm. Ooh. from that syringe yeah and so that makes me wound it right yes i need to mark an approach indeed what, what what's what, what's the effect of this this thing because i assume it's not just uh oh I, I mean, you so yeah it, it injected into your truth serum then that's what it I, had I think it makes sense to mark clever. That's kind of good too, since clever is my worst one. But <laughs> I love how quickly you guys want to mark your worst stat. Oh, I didn't want to roll it anyway. It's awesome. <laughs> Very funny. They, I'm learning a lot. It's revelatory. Yeah, but I think I, I, I think clever is the one that makes sense. Too. Okay. I mean, if if I can't lie, then it's hard to be be tricky. Hard to be clever. Okay. Uh, let's <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Back to you, you see the star dancer and Alina are facing off at this point. People move, they're giving you space, right? Lightsaber, nobody wants to truck with that. I'm imagining that the, you two are near the Cyclops smile and. Um, I got this. This is no problem. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. A friend of yours? Mm. An ex. <laughs> You're going to die, Slimo! <laughs> I'm gonna just rip the gun out of her hands with the force. Oh, that sounds. And then turn it around and stun her. Ooh, that sounds Ooh. cool. I want to see how this goes. Never tell how? me the odds. Never tell me the odds. Sure, let's attempt something despite terrible odds against you. Uh, what approach do you feel like you're using? Daring. <laughs> I don't know. How is how is this daring? So daring. I'm not saying no. But how do you like feel because that like I deactivate my lightsabers because this is a blast right. of life. I need to, I I need to stir them. Right. So I gotta there we go. This is a two-handed weapon. I need I need both hands free to grab it and swat, switch it to stun and blaster. That sounds great. That feels daring to me for sure. Go ahead and roll plus daring. All right, let's go. 13. <laughs> what? <laughs> it happens exactly. As you said, I was, I was so ready to help, and I was not. Nope, no help is not needed. The force is strong with this. It's one. Like, like Alima, she goes, oh. I don't want to kill you, and I don't want to leave you with them. So, oh man, she falls to the ground. Bind and... her and carry her. We're taking her out of here. Uh, there are, are still... there any binders behind the desk? Sure. Yeah. It's a detention center, probably. Yes, there are there are binders they have. Uh, you guys can suit up, grab whatever equipment that you imagine. You now have your field kit, uh, but other people are, of course, grabbing for things. And yeah, they're, they're oh, where are we going to go? Do you guys have a ship? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we, we got picked up. <laughs> We got yeah, we were picked up. So our ship is somewhere. Reinforcements oh, are on the way. On the way. I don't cool. know if they're gonna dock with us, but oh, the Rambarian picture disappeared. Why did it disappear? I saw it a second ago. Uh, anyway, Rambarian is looking at you. I thought you were dead. She wouldn't recognize droids, right? Because the astromech's kind of a new thing. Um, no, I think she'd recognize, you know, uh, she would know that there's a droid around, might not suspect that, that 
droids is in it. Yeah. But okay. Kaido is in it. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were dead, George Jack. Yeah, I'm not. Um, we we got away. She looks around. Lucky you. Yeah, uh, for a while, please. I, uh, come on, let, let, let are you? What is George X's wife's name? Did we Ooh. define that yet? Because uh, she's about I, to ask. I, she's about to ask where she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need the name generator. I'm not good at coming up with names. I'm not great at it either. That's why I have a name generator. Yeah. Um. Mm. Giving me bad names. K, C A Y. Sorry, um, Tamar. I'll put it in the chat. Where's Tay? Did she make it? I, I don't know where she is. I was supposed to to meet up with her, but then the attack came and uh, yeah. I'm sorry I for you. I couldn't make it. I hope she's, she's still alive somewhere. And I kind of hot dropped you into that. So what did you do once uh, you'd saved Blix from the Imperial droid. I probably should have asked that question before. I, um, I think I checked that he is still alive. Uh, yes, and he is still alive. I, uh, ooh. Yeah, I guess I tried to carry him uh, or uh, first try to wake him up. And if that doesn't work, I'll carry him. I think it's, a, it's one of those, like he's really pretty out of it, but can stumble walk so you've got his you've pulled yeah, yeah, his arm around you and my, yeah my so and that's when you ran into Ooh, ran action could, could maybe we have that conversation while i'm like leaning over him so i'm not i'm not facing her i oh. i'm uh, I like uh that. yeah okay cool so uh you've got a bunch of people asking questions there were only so many blasters to hand around at some point uh while everybody's trying to figure out the next plan the alarms go off and uh i think droids you're aware that a slicer who's in the system is probably aware what's going on has turned off all of the alarms and chances are that they're sending some storm to push your way what are you doing time to go Let's head out. Nice. Um, so there yeah. should be, in my opinion, there should be. Uh, I'm going to look around. There should be like a, a sled or something like that. Um, that has uh, that they'd use for larger prisoners, like I don't know, Wookies or something like that. Um, sure. We'll say that in that the area where all of the gear was stowed, there's a, a sled for unconscious beings, like a little grav sled. Yeah, and I think that. Um, I can, you know, I can drive that while LC looks at Georgia and anyone else who's wounded. Cool. I think uh, LC is picking up. Uh, thing. LC is picking up. Um, uh, shoot, I've already forgotten her name again. Alima. Alima. Yeah, and putting binders on her. Okay. And we'll put her on the sled as well, but maybe not look after her until we get George Act taken care of. And a few of the prisoners are not in great shape. Um, they probably come over to you, Elsie, 
because you look like a medical droid. And they're like, yeah, my arm's here. And it's like, I got, they did a thing, got the number on my shoulder. They're asking for help. Then I suggest you seek medical attention. (laughs) Nice. Harsh. Yeah, he's not going to help. He's not a medical droid. He just looks like one. Somebody messed with his programming. And that's when two things happen. First of all, the... No, so the is, yes? Ca- is Captain Oya Salo was here? Like She's in this NPC page. Oh, oh I just stuck her in the NPC thing because okay. it was in the last one I left it. I'm like, I like gotcha. Ayasala. She could be there if you right. want Ayasala okay. to be there. I mean, she's like stealing things. I, so. like, I mean... She's fun. I want to trigger my archetype move if she is there. So. Okay. Uh, yes, she is there. Do you want to trigger yeah. your archetype move? All right. Move so the one playtesting, I love this archetype move. It is not helpful at all compared to every other archetype move, but it's so good. <laughs> it's a drama maker. I love it. So I roll three with disadvantage. Clever, yes. Because I'm clever. And that's what this is tied under. <laughs> oh you're causing so much trouble it's great uh that's that's a five five a six six All right yeah mark that's, another approach i mean unless somebody wants to help <laughs> unless someone wants to help does someone want to help this oh wait uh, no that that's where you get tricky and confusing so let's not deal with that now because if you have an advantage or like that's advantage and disadvantage on one roll. It just cancel out, then yeah. become a flat roll. That's yeah. all. So, so that's that's a that's something to discuss later. Uh, yeah. Let's leave it as the sex because okay. uh, I, they, I I definitely owe them a debt. Yeah, I think time. that's I think that's it. She you owe her a debt. Uh, she's not angry with you, but but she Is says a second time. I, oh oh. Yes. Nothing. You look well. Yeah. You owe me. You've got to get me off of this place. Out okay. Of here. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and so two things happen at this point. Uh, this will be our like cliffhangery for our session because I wanted to carve out a little bit of time at the end. The first thing that happens is that the doors open up and you see there is a squad of stormtroopers who are rushing forward and starting to fire at you. The second thing that happens is that the cavalry arrives and they immediately start, you you can hear it, explosions outside of the Star Destroyer as a pitched battle has begun and uh, everything starts to shake. Uh, and there are blaster rifles going both sides. They're all the same color because, you know, uh, well, you guys might have green blaster bolts that you, you're firing back, but anyone is firing Stormtrooper blasters, they're red. And, um, and yeah, that's the pitched battle that we end this session on. Again, I wanted to carve some time for feedback. I'd like to take a two-minute uh, bio break. So I'll see you guys in just a few. Thank you all so much for our first session. And now it is time for feedback. We will begin with wishes and end with stars. Wishes, anything around mechanics, clarifications, points of of consternation. I am open to it. Who'd like to go first? Talking about wishes. So I can start. I've got a, you know, I tried to take some notes um, while I was doing this. And um, the first thing I had, so one of the things overarching is I found it a little bit difficult for me to um, mark approaches, which is one of the things the system is trying to get me to do in order to advance. Um, So one of the things I wrote down is um, maybe whenever you aid someone else, you you should mark that approach um just to push it um and maybe every time you roll a six minus regardless of the outcome that an approach needs to be marked i don't think that's true of 
I think that's true sometimes, but not of all of the rules. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Um, we saw a lot of advantage here. We didn't see a, I think we saw disadvantage maybe once. Um, I'd say, um, maybe push disadvantage more. It seems like there's a lot for you to handle as far as uh, dishing out disadvantage as well as marking. So any of those things you could make as an automatic thing, like whenever you go to aid someone, you mark, a, you mark an approach or whenever you uh, take, a, take harm, you mark an approach or something like that that makes it a little bit more automatic, I think would be easier on your part. Um, let's see. I think that was most of what I had. The only other okay. thing was about whenever you aid someone, it rolls a die. But I think that uh, Joe will probably talk about how the die, die adding in die combines with advantage and disadvantage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Stephen. I appreciate it. Good luck to go next. Uh, I'll go, I guess. Um, and this is interesting. I don't know if you have plans for the future, but looking back through every PBTA Star Wars game and how you always add that cramped quarters move, <laughs> like I expect you eventually to do that because you love that sort of mechanic that helps build, that helps create scenes amongst the PCs. Yep. yep. And like that plays into the whole my whole bonds theory with the the helping. Because right now it feels like, yeah, you can just help as much as you want, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, as we've seen, like, if you're rolling with disadvantage, I guess you cannot help because it's adding a third die that, because it says choose the two highest. That's where you're going to, like, right now, that's where, like, there's the confusion. Because, like, can you help when someone has disadvantage? Because that's basically rolling with advantage and they cancel each other out. And I think just, a little a little note in there to clarify it was needed. We'll definitely get that slipped in. Thank you for that. Yeah. Any more, Julie? Uh, no, that's all I can think of right now. I mean, like, yeah, like there's no down, like, yeah, there's no downtime stuff, which I know that you're generally a fan of. I'm, I am as well. So cool. Thank you very much, Anish. Yeah, I, I was also thinking about the clarification about aiding, and I think you should be able to help someone when when they're rolling with disadvantage. And I mean, you could do it that you make the roll, you take the to two lowest dice, then so then those two dice are fixed, and then someone can come in and help you. You can replace one of those dice with whatever the the, the new die is, I guess. Um, yeah, I th sorry, I'm just I'm talking it out yeah. in my head so it makes sense. I feel like the consternation might come that help comes after the roll. So the idea that I'm helping, canceling out dis because to me in other games, I've got disadvantage. I'm helping you. I would give you advantage. Now you're just do a flat roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you do Absolutely. disadvantage going into the roll and help after, then you've already rolled the disadvantage. So how do we do that? And I think giving another die and letting that count is is a pretty good solution without too many steps okay thank you very much Andish and and jillian for uh giving voice to that anything else Andish? and and uh, continuing on that I, I, yeah and maybe more <laughs> i don't want to say concerned but but about the effect of aiding someone who's already rolling with advantage or maybe not i mean if you can roll with advantage and then someone can help you it's it's really hard to fail. But on the mm -hmm. other hand, if you've rolled with advantage and need help, then you're you're kind of in a situation where you need help anyway. So I, I don't think it, it it isn't. I mean, it, it kind of is double advantage, and it kind of isn't because you're helping after you've seen the result. So uh, um, yeah, I, I I think it it's fine uh, to to be able to do it afterwards either way. But uh, and I, I really like this form of, of help. Uh, that, uh, but that's a, a star, maybe. 
So, uh, well, let's yeah. let's shift to stars. I don't. Greg doesn't get to give any wishes because we. No, have no, I don't get to give any later. wishes or stars. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> you can give stars. Uh, yeah, do you, you want to go ahead and kick to to stars? I can. I, I I'll just continue. Uh, if okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I I like the eight move just to 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 say that I I really do. Uh, I like this type of aid move, rolling afterwards and shifting a hole. Uh, oh no, sorry, uh, giving the extra die in this case really works because it's the um, um, yeah uh, that that means you can have advantage and disadvantage. The alternative would be to like shift a, a, a step uh, with with aid. Um, yeah, I was just going to suggest that too as an <laughs> idea. Like that's the uh, one worldwide think... wrestling thing I love: the putting over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that's better or worse, or, or what it means for for the uh, for the numbers. But it it's simpler anyway. Uh, it, it it's you just roll once instead of rolling the extra die and, and doing that sort of thing. But I'm I'm not sure if it's better or worse. Um, I really like having the different effects on the basic moves from the from what stat you're using. Um, I did not keep track of them. I didn't check the moves before uh, I, I decided what stat to move to, to roll. Uh, I'm sure you could you, know, you could do that. And I think maybe if you're if it's a particular question you want, maybe you you'll, you'll choose based on that. Um, but I, I I think that idea is really good because it means the basic moves are varied a bit more. Um, and it can entice you to to use an approach that you wouldn't normally use, uh, just because. Yeah, I, I, if I get this extra effect, then that's that's really good in this situation. Um, so I I think that's that's really smart. It is a, it makes it a little bit more complicated, but I don't think it's it, it's worth it. It's worth the the rules break to to have that. Um, I like the the archetype moves, but and even if I love that that uh, the the names are are quotes, I did not. I had no idea what a particular move would do before I read the the move text. Uh, I mean, some of them I worried were, it was a little uh, too clever by half, which is why I planned on showing you guys yeah, what yeah, all yeah. the moves did. <laughs> Uh, I really like it uh, because I, I like the, the the quotes thing, but um, I'm not sure if it if maybe it's it's better to have a, a name that kind of tells you what what it is. But that's that's a very minor that's fair. detail. Um, yeah, I like the approaches. Um, think they're they're good. Four is I think four is a good number. Uh, for them, it's not too many, it's not too few. Um, yeah, I'll stop now. Thank you very much, Andesh. Uh, follow up do approach do advantages stack? I, I is either thought, you have it or you don't. I, for simplicity's sake, I was thinking you yeah. either have it yeah. or you don't. I don't yeah. think, yeah, you can't yeah. roll for because, like, you had mentioned, like, too. yeah stuff where like if you had asked questions you were replacing plus one forwards with advantages but then if also like George Act did his archetype thing that gave people advantages I'm like Aah. so like it's something you want to be cl cl specific about in the yeah rules. we need the language to be really clear on yeah. that that's a really good point yeah um yeah like the wishes wise I think we've covered I mean I fucking Jimmy I stars yeah, no, I have stars. I got okay. fucking stars. All right. Yeah. I fucking I love these archetype moves so much. Like, look, I've already said it. I love the scoundrel archetype move. It is not helpful. It is a drama maker and I love it. But it's just like, God damn it, again you met another person that hates you? <laughs> like, I love it. But like it's just like, hey, I can make a thing work. Hey, I can give you advantage. Hey, I can protect you. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I might be able to get us an opportunity. <laughs> I love it. Um, I really like the quotes that you like you, you know, the Star Wars quotes to cover up like the basic names. Uh I like how like I, I it's extra 
like like how there's extra options depending upon the approach you use. Um, what else? I'm worried about dying at four, but that's going to be interesting. I have. Is this enough harm levels? <laughs> like, that's like my second note. So. Like, yeah, blast <laughs> rifle does three. Like, fuck. <laughs> We, we've been playing with harm. That's a bit of leftover from Swodu. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think several times we met and we said we need to talk through harm and then we moved, worked on moves. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Basic hard moves are hard to write. <laughs> I haven't gotten to test out my tricky. negative two to see if that like works well, but like I'm okay with being just absolutely terrible and rolling a miss on it. So, exactly. You just keep the marketing approach. It gets you that much closer to an advance. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's awesome, Stephen. Um. Yeah. So as far as stars, uh, the the thing that I really liked was just about everything I thought of narratively that I wanted to do, I could do. Um, nice. like if I wanted, you know, what would what would my character do here? What would Kadu do? He would hide out in the Astro Mech Droid. He would try and open the door. He would look to see who was in the prison. He would open up all the doors. You know, all of that stuff I could easily do narratively, which was so much fun. It it, it really fit really well. Um, yeah. And I think all of the different character types that we have here fit well with the system and, you know, can be made. So I see a lot of flexibility there where you can make different uh make different types of characters or whatever character you want and you can get the system to fit that yeah. um so i i think one of the things i'm going to go back to a wish i think one of the reasons that i'm struggling um with the uh advancement process is that you know my character is built just to hide out mm mm-hmm. mhm so one of the things I can do to address that is get more in front of things. In other words, instead of being hiding inside of an astromech rolling around, um, either come out and personally do something or take over a different droid um, that would put me more in danger. And it doesn't help that I rolled like 10 plus. I was about to times. say, yeah, yeah, Kadu was kind of rolling hot tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> the dice liked Kadu. Yeah. So. That's good. This is all very helpful feedback. Thank you all so much for partaking in this first playtest of the second gen SWODU uh, working title. Hashtag. <clears throat> cool. With this, uh, I'll bring the recording to a close.